Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if nonsense Naruto becomes legend and then married with Anko. Part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. Naruto gave a short cry of pain as he was slammed into the ground. He tried to get up and run, but a pair of kunai cut his retreat off. Blood was running down his forehead, from where the kunai had cut him, but even as his pursuers watched the cut closed up and the blood stopped flowing. The seven-year-old turned to face his attackers, who were none other than a group of drunken chunins. He knew exactly why they were after him, it was the 10th of October, and Kami knows that the entire village would be out to get him on this day. He was just glad that there were no jounin with the group. At first Naruto tried to fight the men, but was held firmly to the ground, and his feeble attempts at protecting himself were mocked at. Blows upon blows rained down on the helpless child. The commotion even attracted the attention of a few villagers who were happy to have an opportunity to beat up the demon brat. By the time he was found by Hokage, Naruto was barely clinging on to life. Amisama gasped the aged man in shock as he watched the small boy convulse in pain. His eyes had been gauged out and blood flowed from the various cuts on his body, literally flooding the small alley. No body should have been able to produce this much blood, but the Hokage attributed it to the demon within the boy. Wasting no time, Saratobi rushed over to Naruto and administered what healing jutsu he knew to stabilize the boy's condition. Within seconds the royal robes of the Hokage were dyed red with blood. The old man watched in horror as the boy turned his head and gave the Hokage an up-close view of his mutilated eye sockets. Oyaji. I'm here Naruto, everything will be fi, and before the man could complete his sentence, Naruto fell into a deep sleep, only to wake up three months later, to find his world plunged in darkness. Three months later, Lord Hokage gasped the Chuanin, out of breath, the hospital sent word, Naruto is wake. Saratobi's eyes widened as he practically jumped from the window and raced towards the hospital, while constantly thinking of the boy and his mental health. The only good thing that had come out of this was that, the criminals had been dealt with by Ibiki and then publicly executed. Reaching the hospital he wasted no time in reaching the Naruto's room. He knocked quietly and after a muffled come and dot he opened his eyes to see a blonde boy with bandages over his eyes. Naruto, how do you feel Saratobi inquired. I'm fine oyage I why did it happen? Why even though the boy could no longer cry the tear in his voice, spoke volumes of the pain he felt. Why does it always have to be me? Why do I have to be the one to suffer? No longer being able to stop the tears flowing from his eyes, Saratobi went to Naruto's bed and hugged him, the boy latched onto the only source of comfort he could find and let go of all his emotions. He screamed, complained and finally when he was exhausted, he asleep, with the Hokage still by his side. He was falling, and there was darkness all around, he landed on the ground with a splash as his sandals hit water. Naruto could see a light at the end, wait a minute he could see. Yada. I can see, I can see dot before the blonde could start dancing, he heard a whisper. It was like a gust of cold wind in the middle of summers, the words seemed soft, yet they somehow resonated. Someone was calling him, beckoning him to come forward, to come into the light, and that was exactly what Naruto did. The light led him to a huge chamber filled with pipes, both red and blue in color. A large cage filled up most of the chamber, beyond which no light penetrated. As Naruto walked closer to the golden bars he noticed a large paper with seal written on it pasted on one of the bars. Upon a closer inspection, the bars, he noticed complex seals inscribed on it. But before Naruto could touch one of the bars, a pair of red eyes snapped open from behind the cage, only a few inches from Naruto's face. With a shout of alarm he jumped back. Wow, is that the best response you can give boy? Came a booming voice. Squinting his eyes, Naruto could see a humanoid shape crouching on the ground. Who are you? And where am I inquired the boy. We are inside your mind fool, and as for who I am, why don't you ask your precious grandfather? What the hell are we doing here you are? And why did you bring me here? Why my, cursing at such a young age you're not as bad as I thought. Said the voice, sounding amused. I've brought you here to strike a deal as you can see I'm trapped here. I will give you anything you want, in exchange of my freedom. Hey pal shouted Naruto, I'm not stupid. Why the hell should I free you, whoever you are, you're here for a reason. I don't want anything from a scumbag like you. You would do well to mind your tongue boy. Lest I rip it out. A large amount of killing intent washed over Naruto, blasting him away to the opposing wall and making it difficult for him to breath. After what seemed like a lifetime, the pressure finally lifted and he was able to breathe again. You have spirit boy, you are foolish, but brave. Now if you value the life of the old man you love, you will make a deal with me. With these words the figure waved his hand and an image formed in front of Naruto. The Hokage lay on the ground, clutching his throat. Writhing on the ground as his life force slowly slipped into the underworld. You nonsense. What did you do to him? Nothing that you can't prevent. Simply agree with the deal and I'll spare his life, 
You hurt him and I'll kill you. And without warning, wisps of dark chakra surrounded Naruto as he rushed forward, not taking account the bars that separated him and his prey. Even before he could reach his destination, a hand shot out from the cage and slammed Naruto back into the wall. You have potential, boy, here, take my gift. We shall meet again. Before he could make a sound, Naruto was once again hit by the massive killing intent, but this time instead of making him cower with fear, it forced him out. Out into the real world. Once again blackness greeted him, as a sigh of relief left his lips. A second later the seven-year-old's world burst into pain, most of the pain was surrounding his eyes. It felt as if someone had taken a hot poker and rammed it into his eyes. Naruto could distinctly make out the noise of door banging open and frantic voices, before he succumbed, once again to unconsciousness. Tsuritobi watched as the med nins worked tirelessly to stabilize the boy's condition. He was not stupid, he recognized the evil chakra that was concentrated in Naruto's eyes. He knew not what was going on behind those bandages, but he knew enough about the Kyubi's chakra to know that if it didn't stop, then boy he considered his grandson, would, invariably die. How is he he asked, his voice laced with worry as the head medic finished the final checkup of the boy. I think that you should come to my office Hokage Zama. Without a word both men turned, and the Hokage made to follow the slightly younger man. They were delayed a little as the Hokage had to pause for a little while to visit another patient. One who had suffered as much as the blonde jailer. The Heyo Gazamazu Anko Sandot greeted the Hokage. The girl, not even in her teens, lifted her and smiled at the old man. What is it old man she inquired. Nothing, I was just passing by when I thought to see how you were faring. I know that you have gone through a bad experience. I just want you to know that you're welcome to talk to me whenever you feel like it. My doors are always open to you Anko-chan. A brief flash of pain passed over the girl's face, before she masked her face with a cold expression. A smile planted firmly on her face. Ye old man now leave before I stick this kunai in you. She said, holding a kunai with her left hand, the hand that was empty just moments prior. Siritobi suppressed his look of pity as he recognized the mask being put on. Forcing his lips to form a smile, he said, Jan Naenko chan Say an aji. With a nod, the Hokage closed the door and motioned for the doctor to lead him to his office. After five minutes, the Hokage found himself in a wide office, with a hot cup of green tea between his hands. He looked around and barely suppressed a grimace as he saw the pure white walls. God I hate hospitals. There was a large desk, made out of mahogany. On it were various reports and files, no doubt belonging to the innumerable patients in the hospital. Various medical machines were scattered throughout the room. A small bed occupied the left side of the room, while huge file cabinets covered the rear wall. All in all the place looked rather bland, and would have been more fitting for a high uga. The doctor was seated behind the desk and was quietly sipping a saucer of sake. Lord Hokage. I will get to the point and tell you that the boy is suffering of chakra poisoning. It is an extremely rare case, and normally does not happen with ninja. Large quantities of that chakra has been concentrating around his eyes, causing us to believe that the demon is attempting to give the boy his eyes back. A small gasp escaped from Siratobi's lips. He had known that the demon had granted Naruto extensive healing capabilities, but regeneration, that was something he had never even dreamed to be possible. However continued the doctor, seeming unaware of the older man's shock, the massive influx of foreign chakra has destabilized the boy's chakra system. He is at a stage where two things could happen he would either die a horrible death, where his chakra coils would literally vaporize, leaving him in constant agony for approximately two weeks, or his chakra coils could become extremely thick, which might enable to use high-level jutsu rather easily, and making it difficult to attack his internal organs with chakra. It would make Jiyuken use, rather ineffective however to tell you the truth Hokage-sama, his chances of survival are extremely low, not more than 5% I am sorry. Tsuritobi sat shell-shocked as he listened to the doctor make his report. Never in his life had he heard anything like this. A lone tear escaped the man's eye at the thought of losing his self-proclaimed grandson. Without even looking at the medic, the Hokage left the office. He remembered all the times he had with Naruto, he still remembered the day he had picked up Naruto from the debris left over from the Kaiubi's rampage. When he had seen the look on Naruto's face, he had smiled and forgotten the wreckage that surrounded him. The small chibi Naruto gurgled happily and made a grab for the old monkey's nose. The Hokage had watched a boy grow up from the shadows. He had provided for the boy when he had been unable to do so. He had even sneaked into Naruto's apartment just to put some extra ryo on the boy's nightstand when he had run out of cash. But despite all that, the Hokage simply couldn't do anything to help Naruto out at this time. For all the power the old man possessed, right now, at that particular point of time, he felt helpless. With a sigh, the Hokage started to make for his office, to tackle the paperwork that had no doubt accumulated over the period of time he was busy. Boom, an explosion of chakra rocked the hospital, the bang was soon followed by a large amount of chakra output. The chakra felt tainted and evil. A chakra that had not been felt since seven years. 
All plans of paperwork vanished from Saratobi's mind as he quickly rushed to Naruto's room. Nothing could have prepared him for what he saw next. On the bed lay Naruto, writhing in pain and clutching the bandages surrounding his eyes, he parted his lips, only to let out a scream so horrifying and filled with pain that it sent chills down the Hokage's spine. The door behind Hokage exploded as various Mednins and Anbu rushed into the room, no doubt attracted by the chakra and the boy's screams. The medics did all that they could to calm Naruto, they even tried to tranquilize him, but nothing worked. The screams continued for 15 minutes, but to everyone present it looked like hours had passed, as they all watched a small boy convulse in pain, with them the famed Kanohan in watching in horror, unable to do a simple thing like assisting the boy. Once the scream subsided, so did the sudden lethargy of the doctors. At once they all sprang into action, using various medical jutsus to ascertain the boy's condition. After waiting for an hour, Saratobi's patients finally ran through, what is it? What the hell happened to him the Hokage all but screamed at the mass of doctors. Nothing Hokage-sama stuttered a medic, his eyes wide, the boy seems to be absolutely fine. No signs of damage at all. He has regained his eyesight. Before the doctor could continue, the old man, finally having enough excitement to last a lifetime promptly fainted. Tsuritobi opened his eyes, an unwilling groan escaped his lips. He raised his head to find himself in a hospital room. A bottle of glucose was connected to him, his eyes widened as he remembered the events of last 24 hours. Naruto's awakening, the boy crying his heart out, the screams, the chakra poisoning, Tommy. Naruto with surprising strength, Tsuritobi dragged himself out of the bed and made his way to Naruto's room number. As he reached the room, he couldn't help but smile at the irony fate put the boy through. The numbers 999 were displayed on the door in bright red. As silently as he could, he opened the door. Startling a medic, who was just finishing with his checkup on the boy. How is he inquired the Hokage. Much better Hokage-sama. I expect him to be at 100 efficiency within 2 to a maximum of 3 days. A small smile crept up on the older man's face, highlighting the many wrinkles and age lines on his face, and for the first time the Hokage looked his age, you never cease to surprise me, Naruto. The words were said so quietly that, the medic, who was standing close to his lord, could barely hear them. The doctor switched his gaze to his patient's face. How could a boy, who could give an old man such happiness, be a demon? He thought before leaving the room as quietly as he could so as to not to disturb the surrogate grandfather and his grandson. Saratobi moved to sit on a chair near Naruto's bed, when a slight twitch in the yellow-haired brat's hand caught his attention. The smile quickly upgraded itself into a full-blown grin as he took a seat and placed his hand on Naruto's much smaller one. The slight touch caused Naruto to jerk into consciousness. A red glow could be seen, emanating from behind the bandages. X. Naruto woke up upon feeling a hand touch his own, he moved his other hand to his eyes, only to find them be stopped by bandages. I think that we should wait for the doctors, the Naruto-kun. Oh Ajison the boy sounded surprised, and for a moment Saratobi wondered if his so-called had made it through the ordeal with his sanity intact, but before Saratobi could continue his train of though, he was hugged fiercely by a seven-year-old prankster. The Hokage returned the hug, only to feel Naruto shaking slightly. Are you alright Naruto? Naruto lifted his head, and Saratobi could see tears escaping from behind the bandages. I the man Naruto choked out, he was killing you. Who? As you can see my boy, I am absolutely fine. There's some time before the medics come to check on you again, so why don't you tell me the reason for your fears the elder man asked. X. So for half an hour, Naruto explained, to the best of his ability what that man had done. Upon finishing, Naruto asked exactly what Sandame had dreaded. No, Ajison who was that man? Saratobi looked at the boy, he was about to reveal a secret that he knew would change Naruto's attitude towards the village. He just hoped that the boy could forgive both him and this village. With a sigh Sandane parted his lips to unknowingly reveal a secret that would rock the foundations of the entire shinobi world. Naruto, you know the Kaiubi attacked Konoha seven years ago, right? After being answered by a nod, he continued, a great battle followed. Even the combined might of every ninja of Konoha, we couldn't put a stop to the demon's rampage. On the contrary, we actually managed to annoy it. The battle lasted for the entire day. That is until the Yandame appeared upon his summon. He used one of his special techniques and Gamabunta's attacks to draw the Kaiubi's attention. This gave the remaining ninjas enough time to regroup and use their most powerful jutsus at the demon. Managing to Atlas disoriented. This gave the fourth all the time he needed to completed the most advanced sealing technique known to man. Using his own body as a medium, the fourth summoned the Shinigami. Using the Death God's power, Yande managed to seal away the Kaiubi and a child. No one knows where he got the child from, some say that he was an orphan, and some he was the child of Yandame himself that child was you Naruto. Comprehension dawned on Naruto's bandaged face. His eyebrows shot up, and his mouth opened slightly. What does that mean Oji-san? 
that I'm Yandames. Not wanting to give Naruto the wrong idea, Sandame quickly stopped that train of thought. No Naruto, as far as I'm aware the fourth had no child and was unmarried. I believe that your resemblance to him is because of the seal he crafted on you. With an almost unnoticeable nod, the blonde continued, so that's why they hate me, the villagers I mean. They think that I'm Kaiubi I'm not, right? No you're not Naruto, unfortunately though the villagers only see you as a scapegoat, I think that a part PF them believes you to be innocent, but the loss of their loved ones is still fresh in their minds. Whenever they see you Naruto, the pain comes back, and rational logic leaves them, they can't see reason I request you, please do not be angry at them. I know that it's a bit much to ask, but I know you. I know how you are behind that mask of yours. Don't forgive them, but I beg you, please don't judge them too harshly. I promise Ajisen. I will not hate them, they can't control their actions. I promise that one day, I will lift the curtain that blinds them, and make them see the truth I promise. I also want to warn you Naruto, Kaiubi is a fox, and like all Kitsunes, he is extremely cunning. He tricked you once already and will try to do so again, be extremely careful when dealing with him, and if possible don't talk to him at all. Now on a pleasant note, the doctors and I believe that Kaiubi has given you your eyes back, but before they could continue their conversation however, a group of medics entered the room. Upon seeing their patient awake, their eyes widened a bit. But they only acknowledged both the occupants with a short bow, Hokage-sama, Naruto-san. Ah, I'm glad that you came. I was just about to send for you anyways. I think that Naruto here might be getting a little frustrated with the bandages, and I'm sure all of us are excited to see his eyes. Do you think that it's safe to remove the bandages medic-san? I don't see any reason not to Hokage-sama. Said a medic, while scanning Naruto's body, who had his mouth wide open, slight drool was beginning to escape. The other medic picked up the scissors which were placed in a small tray full of other medicines and tools. He moved over to Naruto, please close your eyes Naruto-san, and don't open them till you are instructed to do so. He ordered the boy, who only replied with a nod of his head, his mouth firmly shut again. With a firm hand the second medic tilted Naruto's head and kept him firmly in place. The other medic used the scissors to quickly rid the boy of the bandages that were covering his eyes. Now Naruto-san, slowly open your eyes and tell us if you can see again. Slowly Naruto opened his eyes. A red glow surrounded his eyes, and he immediately shut them. Too bright he managed mutter. With a nod, Suritobi signaled the medics to switch off the lights and close the curtains. Open them again Naruto he commanded softly. Once again Naruto opened his eyes, in the dark room Naruto's eyes glowed like a shining beacon. Whoa, everything's so bright he exclaimed. Listen to me Naruto, I want you to relax your eyes. Close them and think about something that soothes you. Instinctively, Naruto thought about the darkness, the feeling of complete invisibility that the darkness gave him. It was his savior, it helped him hide from villagers and guided him home. Unknown to him, Naruto's chakra had started reacting to its master's call, and Naruto's form started flickering. One second he could be seen, and the next he seemed to dissolve completely. But Naruto didn't notice all this, he was experiencing peace for the first time in his life, the feeling of tranquility. He felt free more free than he had felt ever, he could sense everything in the room. From the three other occupants to the small insects crawling on the walls. The feeling stopped however, when the lights came back on. Suddenly feeling blinded, Naruto quickly opened his eyes, forgetting for a second his previous experience. What he saw however, confused him to no extent. The Hokage had kunais in both of his hands, and the doctors had something green coating their hands. The Hokage's hands tightened around the kunai when he saw Naruto's eyes. What exclaimed Naruto, freaked out by the sudden hostility shown by his adoptive grandfather. Without a word, the Hokage pointed one of his kunai to the mirror. Naruto practically jumped from his bed and made his way over to the mirror. What he saw, gave him the shock of his life, and the citizens of Konoha a splitting headache, as a shout penetrated all windows and houses. The sound was even heard, in a heavily soundproofed room, in the lowest dungeons of the Hokage Tower, where it put a sadistic smile on the face of one torture expert. The passing hour saw Naruto, Sandame and the head medic, who Naruto found out to be named Toru, seated in the office of the cage of the Hidden Leaf Village. A pair of confused red eyes stared at the Hokage, as Sirotobi pulled out a pipe from his robes and calmly lit it, he then proceeded to close his eyes and take in a long breath, allowing the tobacco to calm his nerves and poison his lungs. He opened his eyes, and returned Naruto's gaze. Smiling at the boy's expression, he turned to the other man seated in his office. So Toru-san, do you have an explanation for this unique change? I don't know Hokage-sama. When I was conducting a checkup on Naruto-san, I noticed a change in his eye structure, but I merely assumed it to be the result of the fox regenerating the boy's eyes. Once again Saratobi turned to his young grandson, who was uncharacteristically sitting quietly and just listening to his two superiors form theories. Naruto, do your eyes feel any different? Hi. I can see much better, it's like shadows don't exist for me. I can see all the dust in the air. 
I can even count the wrinkles on your face Ajison exclaimed the boy, to which the Hokage merely responded by a slight chuckle, before his face once again turned serious. The only reason I can think of is that this is the gift Kaiubi spoke of. From what you say, it enables you to see much clearly, and when you pump chakra into your eyes, it helps you see in the dark Siratobi switched his gaze towards Toru, do you think that this could cause problems in the future? As I said Siratobi sama I have never experienced nothing like this before. Somehow the fox managed to restore the chakra pathway surrounding Naruto's eyes, and genetically alter the structure of his eyes, also there is no trace of Kaiubi's chakra. I believe that as long as Naruto does not force the beast's chakra into his eyes, he should be completely fine. Thank you Toru-san. It goes without saying that news of this incident should not leak out. It must be treated as an S-class secret, adequate punishment will be dealt out. Now, I believe that I've kept you from your work long enough not missing the signs of clear dismissal, the head medic got up and bowed once before leaving. Once the medic had left the office Aritobi quickly flashed through a dozen seals and put up a sound barrier surrounding his office. Now Naruto, what was that trick you pulled in the hospital? asked Aritobi, his tone firm and voice cold. Upon hearing his grandfather change so much, Naruto stuttered a bit, but replied nonetheless. I, I don't know I closed my eyes and thought about darkness, and I felt good, I felt free. What happened? Nothing much, for a second it was like you had literally faded into the shadows. I couldn't even sense your chakra anymore. said Siratobi, leaving a thoroughly shocked Naruto. But, but that's not possible, is it? I mean I'm not from Shikamaru's clan, am I? No you're not, not even Nara Shikado can do something like that, and he's the clan head. The Hokage pause, his expressions changed to indicate an idea. Tell me Naruto, you've been going to the academy for two years now. Do you know how to generate chakra? Hi, we've covered the theory, but we have never done it before. Don't worry. All you need to do is to hold this hand sign, and concentrate on mixing your spiritual and physical energy now Naruto, generate some chakra for me. Without a word Naruto stood up and closed his eyes. His face twisted into one of concentration as he combined his physical energy and spiritual energy. Once again, Naruto felt the freedom he had felt in the hospital room, and opened his eyes. X. Saratobi looked into the slitted eyes of Naruto while he concentrated, a few seconds later, a dark glow surrounded Naruto. The boy didn't vanish like the last time, but dark wisps of chakra flared around him, blowing his sun-kissed hair with wind that could not be felt. Slowly Naruto opened his eyes and met the shocked ones of his leader. A few seconds passed as both the occupants of the room fully grasped the situation at hand. Finally Saratobi overcame his shock and told Naruto to stop channeling chakra. Never never in my life had I thought that I would encounter something so marvelous. He muttered to himself, as he took a long puff of his pipe. Na, Oyaji what just happened? Why was my chakra black? Saratobi gave a small smile, well before I state my theory, let me give you a brief history lesson. You see Naruto, there are three types of chakras in the world. Holy, human and demon chakra. Each of them has their own unique properties. But a few millennia ago, it was not so. There were only two forms of chakra holy and demonic. Holy chakra was, as you would no doubt have figured out could only be channeled by celestial beings, except one. Only the Shinigami could not use this chakra. In its raw form, it could be used to heal any form of injury, and give its wielder the power to use light-based jutsus. The demonic chakra on the other hand, was corrosive in nature. In its raw form, it could poison and burn down anything it came in contact with. Jutsus could not be used with this chakra, but in its raw form itself, it was an immensely destructive. It is much later that the third form of chakra human chakra came into existence. It was actually an angel cast out of heaven who introduced this chakra. It is not known why that angel was cast out, but before he is exiled to our plane, the ability to wield holy chakra was taken away by Kami. Instead leaving him with an impure form of chakra, human chakra. Upon realizing that he still possessed chakra, he started experimenting with it to find its properties. He found that he could concentrate chakra into various parts of his body, to increase the strength of those parts. Thousands of years later, this ability diluted further, and was passed on to his descendants, which were later called shinobi. This however does not concern you, like I mentioned before, only the shinigami did not wield holy chakra. Instead he wielded darkness chakra, it gave him complete control over life and death. It is believed that his form of chakra was so great and terrible, that all the other celestial beings, including his brother, Kami, were both jealous and afraid of him. I think that during your sealing when the Yandame summoned Shinigami, some of his chakra got trapped in you. It lay dormant and mixed with your own chakra. Making an entirely new form of chakra. It seems that your chakra in its raw form, lets you control shadows. But why it showed now, and not earlier, I cannot say. There is one more test to see how strong and diverse this new chakra is. Siratobi opened one of his desk drawers and took out a card, I want you to channel some of your chakra into this card. Nodding, Naruto took the paper from Siratobi and channeled some chakra into the paper. 
a small tearing sound could be heard as the paper split into two. What does that mean Hokage-sama said Naruto, not realizing his slip-up. The Hokage refrained the urge to smile upon hearing Naruto of all people calling him by his title. It means what I had hoped it would. Your chakra is some sort of hybrid between human and Shinigami's chakra. It allows you to control shadows to some extent, but at the same time it has not lost its ability to become aligned with nature. Every normal human's chakra has an affinity towards either one of the nature's forces. After some time their chakra can be aligned to more than one element. The elements are either fire, water, wind, lightning or earth. The card I gave you was a chakra sensitive card. You have wind affinity because your paper split into two. It means that you'll have less problems with using wind related jutsu, and with some training, you might even gain some control over that element. However I suspect that because of your shadow chakra, you might not be able to use all types of jutsus. I think you might not be able to perform any jutsu which is higher than B rank. Naruto, who up to this point was getting ready to shout about being an all-powerful ninja, quickly shut his mouth and looked disappointed. Upon seeing the look on the young boy's face, Saratobi couldn't help but laugh. Oh Naruto-kun he said, rubbing tears of mirth out of his eyes, don't be disappointed, I'm sure that you'll be able to perform tones of never-before-seen techniques with your new chakra. Upon hearing these words the boy brightened up considerably and shouted while raising his fists, Yosh. I will use my new powerful chakra and become the greatest Hokage there ever was he ended with a classic thumbs up pose that reminded Hokage of a certain beast. Before Saratobi could say something, Naruto once again started looking gloomy. Hey Ajisen I was thinking about what you told me about the villagers might not hating me deep down, I want to believe it, but I think that even the slight possibility of them acknowledging me might never happen if I stay here and continue to remind them of what they lost. I, I was thinking of leaving the village for some years to train so that when I come back they can acknowledge me for who I am and not who I keep imprisoned in me. X. Saratobi's face changed into one of confusion, frankly, he had never expected such a request from the boy. His face displaying a number of emotions, ranging from confusion, which was the first, to one of frustration, contemplation, resignation and finally sadness. Naruto he sighed, well you might be correct in assuming that the villagers hate might lessen if you don't stay in the village, however I cannot in good conscience allow a seven-year-old boy out into the shinobi world. I'm sorry Naruto, but I'm going to have deny your request. Saratobi could not bear the heartbroken expression on Naruto's face, once more the Hokage closed his eyes and uttered an audible sigh. Come again at noon tomorrow, we'll arrange something then. The heartbroken expression quickly morphed into one of jubilation so fast that the Hokage was forced to think that Naruto had used some kind of Jinjutsu. A loud yell of yada dot could be heard by everyone throughout the village, I will be here the first thing in the morning he concluded in a softer tone. Practically jumping with joy the seven-year-old happily exited E Tower and went to his home, where he kept track of each hour that would lead him closer to gaining the village's respect. X. What would you do now? Asked a voice. I don't know. The boy is right, him leaving He Village might cool down things a bit. But no seven-year-old can't survive in the shinobi world. You have me I'll watch over him. Dot said the mysterious voice. A small chuckle could be heard, you can't even watch yourself, I sure won't trust you to take care of a kid Jiraiya. The man known as Jiraiya stepped out from the shadows, he wore green and red clothes, with a headband which had the kanji for oil. Two red streaks could be seen going from the man's eyes and down his cheeks, those streaks gave of the impression that the man was crying tears of blood. He had long white hair, spiking in every direction, and a large scroll on his back. Jiraiya pouted, well I could train him for some time, help him reach low chun level. Then you can send him off. That might work, we'll talk to him tomorrow. Be here at 9 a.m. sharp. Yeah, whatever old man. Research awaits. Dot was all he said, before jumping out of the window. X. It was 5 in the morning, when Saratobi woke up. After having a small breakfast and checking up on his nephew and grandson, he started to make his way over to the Hokage Tower. As soon as he stepped out, the cool morning breeze hit him. He looked at his village, it was at this time that the true beauty of Kanoha could be seen. A small village surrounded by lush forests. This was paradise. This was what he protected. Not the mere reflection it had become. Pushing the saddening thoughts out of his mind, he made his way to the tower. Like always, the tower was deserted, Saratobi could occasionally see a random Anbu member take up his or her positions. The Hokage reached the double doors, upon doing so, his eyes widened in surprise. There, in front of the doors, a small boy lay asleep. A little bit of drool escaping his mouth. The old cage couldn't help but grin, as the said boy out his thumb into his mouth. Offering a silent prayer to Kami for preserving the boy's innocence, he lifted up Naruto as gently as he could and carried him over to his office. After placing the boy on a comfortable chair, the Hokage turned to his daily work and called an Anbu member by pressing a button under his large desk. Almost immediately a knock was heard as an Anbu with a weasel mask made into the Hokage's office. Ah Itachi-kun, I see you're up working at this hour. 
It's nice to see such dedicated shinobi. Would you mind fetching Jiraiya for me? The man known as Itachi glanced at Naruto before bowing his head, hi Hokage-sama. A second later he disappeared in a plume of ninja smoke. Barely five minutes had passed before Suratobi heard his window open. The telltale sign of the only loyal San in entering his office. I thought you said to come by at nine old man, have whatever Jiraiya had planned to say was lost as he watched a seven-year-old boy sleeping on a chair. A ghost of a smile could be seen over his face before it vanished and a mask of lecherousness took its place. I see, the brat couldn't wait till later could he? Well just wake him up and let's get on with it. After waiting for the Hokage to make some sort of move, Jiraiya just gave up and flashed through set of hand seals, the water from the water cooler in a corner rose and completely drenched Naruto. The seven-year-old boy's eyes flashed open as spluttered and let out a stream of curses, what the hell? Who was that he questioned, his eyes finally landed on an old man with weird clothes, who was laughing while holding his stomach. The pair of red eyes narrowed, while Naruto quickly rushed and drew back his fist, preparing to smash it in the offender's face. However, much to his surprise, the older man easily grabbed a hold of his fist, twisted his arm, and put it behind his back. Naruto tried to struggle, but the man twisted his arm further, making the blonde boy cry out in pain. In desperation, he raised sandaled foot and smashed it into his captor's groin, only to find his feet come into contact with a hard surface. Hid with a number of women who beat the shit out of me every day, I've learned to protect that part of my anatomy very safely. Before Naruto could respond, a small cough caught his attention. Twisting his head, he saw the sandane chuckling, well Naruto, it seems it won't be difficult to teach you how to keep yourself safe, you do it fine on your own. Upon Noticing the boy's confused expression, Jiraiya butted into the conversation, what sensei here means Gaki, is that for one year you're going to be taught how to defend yourself. You will be trained by me for 12 months, and based how you perform, you will be allowed to leave the village on a training trip. It's for your best Naruto, you know what you hold. Continued Siratobi, right now even a weak genin could easily overpower you. It would bode well for Konoha if you are captured by an enemy nation. For you to face the world, you have to train first. Jiraiya here was one of my students and is the only person in this village who can match me. Regardless of how he behaves, he is a very good teacher, in fact he trained the fourth himself. I believe that under him, you'll finally be ready to complete your goals. Alright Oji-san conceded Naruto with a sigh, if you want me to get stronger before leaving, then I will. Even if it means that I have to deal with the circus clown Dotty pointed towards Jiraiya, who became red with anger. What do you mean Baka, I'm Jiraiya the Sanin. You're the clown here, what kind of ninja wears orange of all colors? It's as if you want to be killed. Hey. It's not my fault that the stupid shopkeepers wouldn't let me in their shops. I'm not exactly the most popular person around here panted Naruto, his eyes glowing slightly. This sight almost made the Sanin forget his words, but he quickly recovered. Well that's gonna change now. We're going shopping, and after I'm done with you, you look like a proper ninja, and after that we'll begin your torture training. The pair continued to argue, as the older and much wiser Jiraiya managed to catch a struggling Naruto in a headlock and started dragging him out through the door. Neither of them paying any attention to their superior sitting behind a huge desk, sporting a mega sweat drop. Alright brat said Jiraiya as he practically dragged Naruto in by his feet, we're here. Now, go select the clothes you want to wear. But remember, I get to have the final decision on what clothes you can wear. Now scram. Naruto looked up and read the shop's name Ninja Needs, he hadn't come here before, maybe if he was lucky he'd actually get some clothes. Muttering about old people with weird clothing habits ordering him about clothes, he entered the store and made it and the drama began but, not in the usual manner, you're alive. But but you're supposed to be dead, they said that they killed you. But before Naruto could muster up an appropriate defense for the inevitable attack, he was hugged by a woman who was crying over him. Unwilling tears escaped his ruby red eyes as he realized that, whoever this person was, she cared for him. He slowly moved his hand to the woman's back to comfort her. After a few minutes, the woman was sober enough to engage in a civilized conversation. I'm sorry muttered the woman, but the villagers were going on about how they had killed you, and I never expected you to be alive. Naruto for the first time got to observe the only civilian who he believed to be the only villager who didn't hate him. She was mature, he could safely guess that she wasn't a day older than 27. She had slightly long hair, reaching up to her mid-back. Her face had touch of makeup, and her honey-brown eyes glistened with tears. She wore a light blue kimono, with dark blue embroidery, which accentuated every curve of her body. Despite her age, she was, for the lack of words, hot. Nah, Nissan. Why why didn't you throw me out like the rest of the shopkeepers? Don't you know about Kaiubi? inquired Naruto. The woman was shocked at the boy's awareness of his tenant, but she nonetheless answered, that's because unlike the other villagers, I see you as someone who keeps this village safe. 
You see Naruto-kun, my husband was the Yoindame's teammate, right from when he was genin, to when they both left the Anbu. The Yoindame went on to become a Jounin instructor, while my husband became a combat specialist and retired after the war. At first I was like the others, but my husband told me of the Yandame's seal, and how many steps he had taken to ensure that the Kaiubi would never break out, it is thanks to him that I think of you as a hero, and not as the demon you hold within your soul. Thank you Nissan said Naruto, his resolve to be acknowledged raised to new heights as he saw that there were indeed some people who liked him. Just then the great Jiraiya made his presence known by entering the store, through the window. The hermit quickly got up and dusted himself, he then proceeded to put his telescope back into a hidden pocket. Yurei Sama said the woman, how many times have I told you not to go peeking on women? Now now Hinamori. You should acknowledge my greatness, I am the savior of Jureya's lecture on his importance to the male ninja populace was cut short by a slap on the head by an irritated Naruto, you you pervert. Iro Senen huffed the small brat. Shut up Gaki, I wouldn't trust you to know the subtle art of seduction, to ensnare a woman with merely a look, to arouse he this time he was bonked on the head by Hinamori, who was sporting a small blush. Pretending to be distracted, Jiri's cleared his throat and addressed Hinamori, Hinamori-chan, can you help me get some clothes for the baka here? I've decided to take him on as an apprentice, only for a year though, and I want him to wear some clothes that wouldn't get him killed. Of course Hirosama. Come Naruto, follow me said Hinamori, as she gently ushered a grinning Naruto into the clothing section, while leaving a seething Jiraiya. X. It had been over an hour since the old hermit had been waiting for his apprentice. I swear I'll kill the Gaki if he comes out wearing something orange. Finally Hinamori made her way out of the clothes section and smiled at Jiraiya, he's definitely going to have half of Konoha after him. Jiraiya looked behind the woman and saw Naruto making his way towards Jiraiya, he stopped near the counter and allowed the older ninja to inspect him. The new Naruto wore a body-hugging sleeveless dark blue t-shirt with black cargo pants that were tied around the thighs but loosened up as they went down, the pants were held up by two belts. A pair of combat boots were adorned on his feet and reached up to his shins. His hands were covered by black bandages that went up to the elbows. Perfect thought Jiraiya. Boy Gaki what's with the cool look? You look like a ninja wanted. Yeah right Iro Senen, at least I don't wear a combination of green and red came the retort. Fine, fine dot conceded Jiraiya, not in a mood to get into a verbal spat. How much for this and a few spare clothes, two rolls of black ninja bandages, two rolls of ninja wire, a kunai holster and twenty kunai and fifteen shuriken he asked Hinamori, who was behind the counter. She quickly tallied up a score, it'll be 10,000 ryo dot she said looking up expectedly. Muttering under his breath about the inflation and how cheap things were in his generation, Jiraiya took out his checkbook, wrote down the appropriate amount, and handed it over to Hinamori. The woman took the offered piece of paper before putting it in a drawer. She smiled at Naruto, my husband, Katero manages a weapon shop for Jown in an anvil level ninja, it's just round the corner. I don't think he'll mind selling you some custom-made kunais though, I've heard that they've been made quite popular by some ninja, visit him if you're ever in the need of a weapon. Arigato Hinamori sent bowed Naruto, I'll find your husband if I am in the need something. Um Gaki, let's get you a haircut. Your hair is too long. Naruto bit back a retort as he followed the older nin out of the shop, all the while watching the man's long white hair blowing in the wind. X. Half an hour, a few tantrums, large amounts of killing intent and many beating later, Naruto walked out from the barber's shop, sporting a new hairstyle. His now slightly shorter hair was spiked up. Unlike before when his messy hair kept on falling into his eyes, only a single short strand of hair fell forward, and the rest was pulled back into a gravity-defying style. Think Ultimate Gohin from Dragon Belts or Virgil from Devil May Cry. Both Naruto and Jiraiya finally made their way to the training grounds. Jiraiya motioned for Naruto to sit down. The apprentice did so, while his master sat down opposite to him. Now listen to me Naruto began Jiraiya in a serious tone, one that surprised the seven-year-old, the Saratobi sensei told me about your new chakra type, as well as what happened to you, leading to your new eyes dot at this, the man's eyes locked into the blondes. Eyes the color of blood, with slits for pupils, matched the gaze of a pair of midnight black orbs. Naruto was not taken by surprise this time, he may like to fool around, but he was exceptionally good at perceiving things, he had to be, to survive this long. He had known that Jiraiya would have known about everything. Apparently satisfied with whatever he was searching for, Jiraiya continued, even though I may not understand the details, I know this, because your chakra is not 100% human, you would only be able to use a select amount of jutsus. For the most part, you would have to invent entirely new techniques. It will be extremely useful because only you would be able to perform these techniques, and even though they can be copied by the Sharingan, the copycats won't be able to use them. However, I must warn you though, creating jutsus is extremely difficult. Many ninjas have lost their lives, trying to control a technique above their level. This is why our training will revolve around trying to teach you to make your own techniques. Another important factor would be your tojutsu training. 
Honestly Sandim expects you to be at least Chunin level at the end of the year, I expect you to be at least high Chunin to low Jounin. I will not tolerate any indiscipline. During training you will address me as sensei. Nothing more, nothing less. You not obeying my rules will cause me immense displeasure. Understand. All Naruto could do was nod as he pondered on the change in Urosenin's behavior. He, however was not given enough time as he was pulled up by Jiraiya. Look carefully, here are the seals used to do jutsu. Remember them and commit them to memory. Practice them until you can do them in any order. Without further delay, Jiraiya showed him the various seals. Ram, snake, rabbit and dog being the most common. We will meet here again tomorrow at 9. Don't be late and practice the seals. I expect you to be at least proficient in them and you should be able to complete all seals in any order in no more than 3 seconds. Dismissed. And with that, the toad hermit made his way to the Hokage Tower, leaving behind a stunned seven-year-old, thinking just one thing. Hungry, food, Raymond. At night Naruto stayed up and practiced the various seals until he could do them in any order. Even though he had been practicing for three hours, he still couldn't complete the entire series in three seconds. His best time was five seconds, and even then he had missed out on the snake and tiger seals. With a sigh Naruto went his small kitchen and quietly took out a pack of instant ramen. He put the ramen in boiling water and then put the necessary spices and vegetables. Once the ramen was done, he transferred the contents into a bowl and took out a pair of chopsticks. He searched for a place to sit down and eat, but the entire apartment was filled with training equipment and books on chakra. Shaking his head at his own dirtiness, Naruto made his way to the roof. Sitting cross-legged he put the steaming bowl in front of him and took a sip of the broth. He broke the chopsticks and started eating his ramen. This was the best part about night, no one's awake, so Naruto could be at peace. It was a nice break from all the shouting and the glares he received. His mind slowly drifted to the woman in the ninja store, and a small smile could be seen forming on the boy's face. Someone acknowledged him, and not only that, for the first time, they let him shop. Naruto had seen the looks that he had received from some of the villagers. They were of barely concealed awe, that is, until they saw his whisker marks and adopted their patented I hate Naruto glare. He looked at the empty Raymond bowl in front of him and decided to continue train. X. Damn it the cry was heard throughout the small unkept apartment. Stupid stupid seals. I hate you said Naruto while looking at his tired wrists. Throughout the night he had been making the seals. What he didn't understand was that how he could any normal shinobi make 12 seals within 3 seconds. He looked at his alarm clock, 5.05 am, the time was shown in bright red. The first rays of sunlight could be seen on the horizon, bathing the sky in orange light. Once again Naruto reset the stopwatch and stared making the necessary seals his hands flashed through various different symbols in fractions of a second. Done. Naruto stopped the stopwatch and looked at the time 4.02 seconds. Damn you Iro Senen he cried and once again got to work. It was around 8.30 that Naruto finally completed his objective. He blared through 12 seals in 3 seconds. Grinning proudly he looked at the watch 8.50. Bomb. The entire building shuddered as a massive facivault vault shook the complex, which was followed by a scream of shit. I'm late without taking a bath or even brushing his teeth, Naruto banged open the door and ignoring the curses from his landlord, he ran full speed to the training fields. X. Ooh. Hee hee hee. That's good. Wow. Look. At. That. Ureya was currently sitting on a tree branch with his trusted telescope in his hand. This particular bathhouse belonged to the Ichiha clan, this particular clan was feared by the entire shinobi world. But what they didn't know was that, the women of the Ichiha clan were let's say well endowed. Carefully Jiraiya shifted his position to allow more comfort as he saw Ichiha Makoto enter the bathhouse. Even when Jiraiya was a Jounin he had always had the hots for Makoto, a young Chuanin, and to watch the wife of the clan head, made his day. His musings however were cut short as a cry of shit. I'm late was heard all over Kanoha. It caused all the women to look towards the source, which just happened to be from the direction where Jiraiya was hidden. Faster than the eye could track, a multitude of Sharingan wielding eyes narrowed in fury. Hee hee. I was all they heard before Jiraiya disappeared in a whirl of leaves and appeared before a short blonde brat, casing the said brat to collide with him and fall. X. Now was all Naruto could manage, it felt as if he had hit a brick wall. Naruto looked up and saw Iro Senen stuffing a telescope in his jacket. Hey Gaki Dot was all he said before Naruto found himself being lift up and be carried by the huge man. Not more than five minutes later, the student and teacher found themselves in a clearing with three wooden posts and a large pond. Now Gaki, I hope that you did the task I assigned you yesterday, because if you haven't then, there's no point in continuing today. You better believe it pervert. I did it. I can do all the hand seals in any order in less than three seconds, Naruto continued to ramble, completely ignoring his teacher making taking out a kunai and making seals with a look of anger on his face. 
and I can't wait for you to check me during the end of the long speech, Jiraiya finally finished his rather long sequence of seals and swiftly placed the kunai on Naruto's back. Naruto's eyes bugged out as he landed on his knees first and then fell face first, sending a large dust cloud into the air. I told you Gaki to call me sensei. What I did was put you under a gravity field. The kunai on your back is the conduct for that. Now normally, a person would die if he is placed under a gravity field for more than a week. But thanks to the Kaiubi being inside you, you should have no problems. Right now the setting is at 2 times normal gravity. Each time you disobey me I'll increase the setting by 1.5x. As for your assignment, I already know that you can do it, and I'm proud of you. I had planned on teaching you Jutsu and some theory today, but you decided that you needed body conditioning. So your assignment for the next week is to live dot and with that Jureya quickly left, leaving a struggling Naruto. It was late in the afternoon when Naruto finally managed to get halfway to his apartment. On the way various villagers had taken the advantage of his handicap status to pass remarks at him. Damn it. My body feels so heavy. It a pain to even breath. Well at least the villagers aren't hitting me anymore. Was all Naruto could think as he made his way to his apartment. With shaking hands he managed to push open the door and set a trembling foot inside. No sooner had he closed the door behind him that he fell down on the ground, asleep from exhaustion. X. The early rays of light made its way into the apartment and lit up a small room. Naruto reluctantly opened his eyes as the events of the last day made their way into his mind. Cursing Hirosenin, he tried to stand up and make his way to the bathroom, only to fall back down. After umpteen number of tries he finally managed to make his way to the bathroom, after a cold shower he returned to his drawing bedroom. After a quick breakfast of fruits and eggs he saw a scroll on his bed. Trudging towards his bed Naruto opened the scroll and saw some instructions. Channel your chakra into the paper to find scrolls on a taijutsu style. I expect you to know the theory by next week. If you fail then I'll double your gravity. Without another word Naruto channeled some chakra into the scroll. With a small poof, three scrolls replaced the earlier one. Opening the first scroll, Naruto read Mui Tai. X. The week passed with Naruto getting used to the high gravity and learning the various stances and how to use his shins and elbows in a fight. Needless to say, at the end of the week Naruto had grasped the basics of the style. On the last day, he was shaken out of his sleep by cold water. What the hell? Heard Jiraiya sensei he caught himself, shuddering at the thought of extra gravity. I see that you're learning Gaki. Frankly I never thought that you'd have adjusted to the high gravity so quickly, and you even got the basics. Dot said Jiraiya in an amused tone, be at the training grounds in an hour. Don't be late. Dot and with that he disappeared in a poof. The passing hour saw a blonde blue wearing ninja wanna bracing through the crowded streets, dodging people and jumping over trading carts. Panting heavily, he made his way to the training grounds to see no one. Out of the blue he was hit by a fist, Naruto went sailing and crashed into a tree, with a little shake of his head he cleared his head, only to find another fist smash him into a tree. This time however he quickly got up and took a look at his attacker. Without wasting a second Jiraiya was upon him, sending kicks, bunches, jabs. It took all of Naruto's concentration to avoid the blows, and even then he was avoiding them only by fractions of seconds. Their a pause in the attack was all that it took for Naruto to take charge. He pulled all his strength behind his punch and sent it sailing towards Jiraiya, only to find it blocked. That actually stung a little brat. Being the Baka you are, I don't think you realized how a nobody like you was actually evading my attacks. Upon seeing the look of confusion on the brat, he continued, it was because I removed the gravity field, you didn't even notice the damn kunai fall from your back. Anyway I want you to go over there and punch that tree. With a nod, Naruto ran to a tree and with all his force smashed his fist into the bark of a tree, oh that hurt. What did you make me do that for Baka the last part was said in a whisper. I heard that. Damn dog ears. You're pushing it now Bakero. Humph. Now if you're finished with your childish insults, look at the place you hit. Dot. Without a doubt that tree had a fist-shaped indentation on it. Sugoi. Hell yeah. I'm the strongest. Shut up brat your pathetic watch. Homely the white-haired pervert walked over to another tree and slammed his fist into the bark with a loud crack, wood splintered. Almost splintering the tree into two. Jiraiya turned back to his wide-eyed student, this is strength kid, and when I'm done with you, it'll pale in comparison to yours. At not getting the kind of response he wanted, the sensei inspected Naruto, the boy was looking at the tree with wide eyes, he slowly turned to face Jiraiya, and with a look that startled the older man, he said, teach me. X, one month later, Ichi, Nai, San, Shai, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachikayu, Jayu, Jayuchi, chanted Naruto as he did push-ups with 2x the normal gravity. Jiraiya had explained to him that for the first six months, they would be concentrating on pure taijutsu. Ninjutsu and ninjutsu creation would be taught after the taijutsu training was completed. That however didn't deter our blonde hero from finding different ways to manipulate his chakra. 
he found that he could replicate one of the Nara clan's jutsu without hand seals. They called it the Kajimane, he called it nothing. Really, it was hard to find cool names for jutsus. Ureya had taught him basic academy jutsu such as the Kurimi and the Bunshin, the latter however he just couldn't do no matter what. Nevertheless our blonde hero didn't lose hope and continued his training. Ever since that day when Jiraiya had told him that he'd make Naruto strong, Naruto had worked so hard to complete each and every task that his perverted master set for him. Naruto had to hand it to him, the pervert was an excellent teacher when he wasn't peeking that is. Baju, Naruto stood up, completing his assigned 50 push-ups, and looked at his sensei expectantly, today was the day he finally started the intermediate work on his tojutsu style. Well right now as you know Muay Thai is an extremely deadly and effective martial art. It relies on your stomach, shoulder, leg and hip muscles to execute moves as fast and as hard as possible. When you try to hit someone with your elbow remember to twist your shoulder and hips for maximum impact, now go over to the training post and give me 100 elbow thrusts with each arm. Asu. Urey aside, ever since the training started Naruto had become serious. It didn't mean that he still wasn't a loud mouth did it. Once the training was over, he would once again become a pain in the but the rate at which he was growing was leaving Jiraiya with no time for research. Big fat tears made their way in Jiraiya's eyes, as he lamented the day he had agreed to take the boy as an apprentice. My herd Tsunade is in town the tears and drooping face transformed into a lecherous grin as he imagined those big full and delicious melons. Poof. The old man could no longer be seen, but the villagers would swear for years to come that they heard a shrill scream like a man losing something precious to him. Two months later, two months had passed since Naruto had been apprenticed under Jiraiya, and over the course of that period, he had changed tremendously. Sure he still visited his Oji-san and had Raymond, but only on weekends, for that perverted nonsense had forbidden Naruto to have Raymond every day, saying that it stunted his growth like hell. Anyway, Naruto had almost finished learning Yue Tai, and Iro Senen had given him some scrolls on another Tai Jutsu form, called Karate. An extremely fast style that was based on punches, kicks and blocks and a good deal of evasion. It was in fact Naruto who had asked Jiraiya for the Karate scroll. He felt that only using elbows, shins and knees limited him. But with combining Yue Tai with Karate, he would be able to use all of his limbs and joints, thus surprising the enemy with each new move. Ureya had also taught Naruto a jutsu called Cage Bunshin. Unlike the regular Bunshin, the Cage Bunshin was a solid clone that could fight back and even had its own chakra system, however one solid hit would dispel it. But the thing to be noted about this technique was that it transferred all that it learned during its life to its master. The technique had helped Naruto in finding flaws in high style. He would spar with his cage bunshin, and when it was dispelled, Naruto would gain information about the weaknesses in his style. It was only because of this technique that Naruto was able to master Muay Thai. However because of his unnatural chakra, he could only produce up to 10 clones. If he tried to make more, the chakra would simply go to waste. Also Naruto had learned a great deal about hand seals. He remembered one of his evening lessons with Jiraiya. Flashback. Now Gaki, since you're developing so fast, I've got a reward for you a lesson on hand seals. Now don't make that face, I had originally planned to tell you this when you finished your taijutsu training, but I guess I can give you a preview now. You see if there were only 12 hand seals, then the total amount of jutsu would be limited, but in order to create a jutsu, you often have to create hand seals. Hand seals are generally used to help in the correct flow of chakra. It means that jutsus can be done without seals, however it takes a lot of concentration and effort to do so. Watch. Ureya got up from the ground and walked to an open area. He closed his eyes and his brows furrowed, after what seemed to be a minute he opened his eyes and said, Underworld spines. Immediately Jiraiya's hair lengthened and hardened, while covering his entire body and forming an ultimate defense. As you can see Brad I can do this jutsu without seals, but it took me months to practice, and even then I still can't use it in battle. There are various ninjutsu specialists who are known to make entirely new hand eels to make amazingly powerful jutsu. One such ninja is Hata Kakashi. Flashback end. That was all it took to motivate Naruto to start his own pet project. X, three months later, X. With the help of cage bunshins, Naruto had finally mastered karate and successfully merged both Muay Thai and karate into well-balanced Thai Jutsu style. His birthday came and went during this period and he received two gifts. From the old pervert he received a scroll on how to increase the gravity field around the kunai, and from old man Hokage Naruto received 20 coupons for free Raymond. there's no point in mentioning that Jiraiya's scroll lay forgotten for many weeks. In a fair fight Naruto could now hold his own against Jiraiya, however the figs were rarely fair, as the older teacher would use cage bunchins to ambush Naruto, the moment the boy let his hair down, while restricting the boy from using chakra. It was also during this period that Naruto started noticing a major problem with his chakra. 
No matter how much he tried controlling it, he would always end up wasting precious amounts of stamina. When he mentioned this to Jiraiya, they could only come up with a solution that the heavy body training and lack of mental stimulation had caused Naruto's chakra to losing the delicate balance between physical and mental energy. To remedy this situation Naruto started meditating for one hour every night before sleeping, and in the mornings he would study scrolls about the history of Konoha, along with subjects like physics and anatomy. The meditation helped Naruto clear his mind and think clearly, while the scrolls on anatomy helped him target the various pressure points and vital areas in a body to effectively disable, knock out or eliminate an opponent. The study on anatomy was done without the knowledge of his teacher. Four months later, once again Naruto surpassed Jiraiya's expectations by completing his Taijutsu training in four months. With constant sparring against his cage bunshins Naruto had improved his Taijutsu to a point where he could easily hold his own against Jiraiya, even with the pervert using Jutsu. At the age of eight, Naruto could be called a Taijutsu master. He had even regained control over his chakra. Through constant practice, Naruto could now meld into shadows within seconds. He could even use shadows to transport himself. He had beat Nero Senen when they had been sparring in the evening, and he had melded into the shadows, came out behind Jiraiya, and hit him at a pressure point to knock the Senen unconscious. After that however Naruto's training had gotten harder, as Jiraiya started going all out and forced him to spar while under the gravity field. He said it was for when Naruto couldn't remove the field during a fight in time. Naruto however felt that the pervert just wanted revenge. Jiraiya had also started to teach him jutsus. Currently Naruto's Jutsu library held five Jutsus Kawarimi, Cage Bunshin, Kajimane, Fuitan, Renkidan and Underworld Spines. The last was the personal Jutsu of Jiraiya and a high B-class Jutsu. All of the Jutsus, except Kawarimi and Cage Bunshin, were high B-class Jutsus and had taken weeks to learn, even with 10 Cage Bunshins. Another thing that they started working on was elemental manipulation. Jiraiya had informed him that through extreme training, some Jounin could actually control the element with which their chakra was aligned to. It was nothing major, but the Nidane was rumored to have mastered his water manipulation so well that he could actually pull the water vapor from the air. Unfortunately for Naruto, his lack of chakra control became obvious when he had completed the first exercise of cutting a leaf into two using just raw chakra. When he had progressed onto cutting a waterfall into two, there had been a small problem of him not being able to stand on water. This had led to extensive chakra control exercises, like tree climbing and water walking. X, five months later, X, five months had gone by since Naruto had begun his training, it could be said that, that the eight-year-old was equal to a low chunin. The only thing inhibiting the brat was his lack of knowledge in ninjutsu, jinjutsu and battle experience. He was no prodigy however, all his accomplishments were a result of his hard work and regeneration factor. In this month Jiraiya had made Naruto concentrate on his chakra control. He had informed Bagaki that for his chakra control to be in top shape, Naruto had to practice all the exercises every month. The pervert was unforgiving during his training. He had made Naruto climb trees without hands, this include walking, running, hopping and skipping on trees. Even with 10 clones working throughout the day Naruto had managed to grasp the training after a week, but it didn't end here knew they had moved on to water walking, where Naruto had to stand in hot scalding water for hours on end, and when he had finally mastered that, he had been ordered by his taskmaster to do all of his daily warm-up exercises while standing on the water. Nonetheless Naruto's chakra control had shot through the roof, and Naruto could feel the difference when he used his jutsu. No longer he felt like he was wasting chakra. Each jutsu carried just the right amount of chakra. No more, no less than the required amount. He couldn't wait to get back to mastering his wind element. Six months later, finally Naruto had managed to become at least proficient in using the wind element. He was no means a master, he could not control wind in its natural form, but he could use his chakra to form cutting winds around his daggers that could cut through both tree and stone. He had bought the daggers from the ninja store run by Hinamori's husband, Ichigo. It had taken a lot of pleading and buttering before the man had reluctantly let Naruto buy a pair of twin daggers. The daggers itself were not fancy or anything, they had a firm and comfortable grip which was 8 inches in length. The blade was made so as it didn't reflect any light, it was slightly serrated and was 15 inches in length. The entire dagger was 24 inches long. It was slightly bigger than necessary, but it would be perfect for Naruto when his height increased. The best part about it however, was that an elemental chakra could be channeled through the hilt into the blade, diving the blade the properties of the chakra. Naruto was training with his blades from a scroll he had received, courtesy the Hokage, when he was interrupted by Jiraiya and Siratobi. Oigaki come over here shouted the deranged pervert, shaking his head Naruto, sheathed his blades at his thighs, and made his way towards his teacher, old man, pervert Dotty said, well bound to each. Not missing the looks of amusement and fury he was receiving. Jiraiya tells that you've been growing strong Naruto-kun. That's why we have a test for you. 
you will be fighting Mido Guy. He is a Jounin specializing in Tai Jutsu. Your task is to defeat him. Said Suratobi, taking a long draft of his pipe. He will be here shortly. As if on cue, a man wearing dark green spandex made his way to the training grounds. Yosh. Aheyo Hokage Sama, Jiraiya Sama, tell me who will I be fighting? Hami, can this guy get any louder? Were the common thoughts of the other three listeners. Saratobi removed a hand from his ears and pointed towards Naruto. Yosh. I will prove my flames of youth by defeating you little man, prepare to lose. And with that the weird spandex wearing ninja got into a stance of what seemed to be the style, iron fist, without waiting further he charged at Naruto, throwing punches and kicks faster than the eye could track. It took all of Naruto's concentration to block or evade the hits. Mentally he cursed himself for increasing the gravity field. Right now he was fighting at 3x normal gravity, and it showed. Quickly Naruto evaded a kick and jumped back, both the combatants glared at each other, Lord Hokage, this boy cannot keep up with me he addressed the Hokage. It was at that precise moment that Naruto struck, driving his knee into the older man's chest. Guy skidded back and once again continued his assault. This time however his speed was matched by Naruto who continued to dodge all the attacks, while throwing out random punches and knee thrusts, which were all blocked. They had been going at it for half an hour, and both of them were now panting slightly from the exertion, beads of sweat rolled down their faces, dripping onto the earth. Both of them at the same time removed their weights and gravity field respectively. Now while Guy gained a massive speed burst, Naruto became even faster, his strength also increased by three times. As they continued fighting it became apparent that Naruto had the upper hand in the fight. With a quick leg sweep he fell the down and then disabled his legs by pressing his pressure points. Do you yield he asked. Hi, your flames burn brightly Naruto san said Guy, for one surprising all present at his knowledge about Naruto's name and the lack of shouting that normally accompanied him. Well done Naruto, truly I did not expect this improvement. Guy is one of the best Aijutsu specialists we have, and you took him out. That was at least high down in speed and strength you displayed. Said Saratobi to a blushing Naruto. Yeah, yeah, old man, I know I'm the best. You better watch out, I'll be the strongest ninja in the world, believe it. Shut up, brat, there's a lot of difference between a Jounin and an S class ninja, you're nowhere near strong. When you can beat me, then you have the right to say you're strong, said Jiraiya while hitting Naruto on the head, get ready from tomorrow we start your jutsu training.